All right, are you struggling with plantar fasciitis or Achilles tendinopathy? I want to talk about the structure and function of the foot and how we can address um, the plantar fasciitis and Achilles tendinopathy using exercise. We take a very here, I've, my approach to plantar fasciitis has become more global, kind of this comprehensive capacity, especially in chronic cases, cases that have persisted for more than three months. Um, so if you have more of an acute flare-up of plantar fasciitis, this isn't really the video for you. This is more for the long-standing cases, um, the, the really stubborn ones. So with Achilles tendinopathy and plantar fasciitis, we can treat it with loading programs because even the research around plantar fasciitis is we get thickening of the plantar fascia and that is a sign that it's degenerative and it's unhealthy so that is kind of you can detect that on ultrasound what we want to do is use a calf raise loading program and we actually use a tool called the fasciitis fighter and the reason this is effective is not only is it cushioned but it has this little bump and let me explain what that bump does it actually puts your foot or your toes in dorsiflexion and what that does is if you pull back on your big toe, you can do it right now and I'll show you with my foot, is it helps pull and tensile the, the medial long, longitudinal arch and the central band of the plantar fascia. So if I bring my right foot up here and I take and pull my big toe back towards my shin, you can actually see the plantar fascia, that central band. So by and that just helps support the arch, it improves the mechanical efficiency of the foot. So by doing calf raises with that position, we're actually able to train that mechanism along with the muscles. And that's shown to be really helpful by research. So I can link um, the study with the high load um, to address the plantar fascia injury as a tendinopathy, so plantar fasciopathy might be a more accurate term than plantar fasciitis for these chronic or long-standing cases. So by activating that windless mechanism, we get a little bit more bang for our buck. Now, like I said, this is a very comprehensive approach. This is also effective in Achilles tendinopathy. Um, and what we have found is that there is some research studies out there that suggest some normative data on the calf raises that you should be able to do depending on your age. Obviously, as we age, um, the ability to do a calf raise decreases, so it factors that in. I will also link that study. So what we're gonna show you is different ways to kind of progress and re -get, in regress the calf raise exercise using the fasciitis fighter to strengthen up your foot and your lower leg to better bulletproof that part of your body to Achilles tendinopathy and plantar fasciopathy. So we're not only are we treating these injuries, but even if you have had those in the past and you're not in the middle of a flare-up, I think it'd be super helpful to kind of perform these exercises on a every other day basis. And that's kind of what we program generally with our patients. Um, and we'll kind of talk about that over here. So. So, fasciitis fighter, you can buy it online, you can get them on Amazon, A lot, occasionally they run out of stock, um, it's a pretty effective product, so you have people buying it. So what we can do is we would start performing a two-footed calf raise, that's kind of ground level, kind of introduction to this, and we put the affected side in that position. So if you can kind of see my foot, my toes are on that, and then I'm just supporting myself on a wall, we're just going to go up and down. So being able to perform a two-footed calf raise is kind of the first step. And then from there, the, the research kind of goes immediately into the single leg calf raise, which is that's what the normative data is on. I have found patients kind of tr have troubles making that step. So I usually go up with two and then down with one. So that's kind of the next step that I like to use in the clinic is down with one before we go just from two to one footed. So then we go into one footed here and back down. This is what the normative data is on. And then from here we can even load up a backpack or we can go off a step to increase the amount of range to kind of load this up. And if we're doing that in a diligent way, monitoring for flare ups, adjusting um, our rep scheme and number of sets, 
we have found that this really helps with these stubborn Achilles tendinopathies or the plantar fasciitises, which are probably more ca accurately categorized as the plantar fasciopathy. So fasciitis fighter, it's a great tool. It's 20, 20 bucks or so. If you don't have this, you can just roll up a towel, which is what I've used in the past to kind of put those toes in a slight amount of dorsiflexion. And remember that kind of helps activate the windless mechanism to kind of get into the mechanical efficiency of the foot and give us a little bit more bang for our buck. So I, hopefully this is a effective um, video for you if you're struggling with Achilles tendinopathy, if you're struggling with plantar fasciopathy and you don't wanna go down the surgical route or injection route, this is a great option for those stubborn cases, those persistent pains in that area. And it's also just good prevention. You know, It's gonna make you stronger if you can hit your normative data, if you can hit the appropriate number of calf raises, you're gonna be better off for it. So I hope that helps. Thanks for tuning in. Dr. Peters here with Omni Chiropractic, providing solutions to pain and performance.